This story is one that intimately ties the complex geology of Victoria with a section in a line of reef that was known to exist and was much sought after, but was ultimately never found. Much effort was placed in attempting to locate it, but the miners and geologists of the time didn't have one crucial piece of information that's required to decipher what is going on here. In this video, I'm going to attempt to solve the mystery of the missing southern section of the Temperance Reef, which was an insanely gold-rich vertical line of quartz that stretched over a long distance, and that, in present day, still exists beneath the feet of many who call Ballarat home. And I'm almost certain that I know exactly where it is. A few weeks ago, when we discovered a gold-bearing reef and started the GoFundMe, I mentioned in the video that I intended to give back to the community and to begin to release some game-changing info. The link to that video is in the description. Even though we never reached our end goal, I can't tell you how appreciative I am that people so generously donated to help us out. I'm a man of my word, so this episode will be one of many to follow that will consist of me walking my talk and sharing some of the most valuable and widely unknown information from the many years that I've spent being an obsessive geological nerd. This episode is technically part two to the video that I released yesterday regarding the strange escarpment that exists in this region, and it's worth watching that first before proceeding, as this is centered around this mountain range here, known as the Brown Hill Ranges. So bear with me and make sure you're subbed so that you are informed when I release these videos. Please do me a solid and hit that like button too. That's all I ask in return for the valuable information I'm going to share with you over the coming weeks and months beginning with this video. The Temperance Reef was, and still is, a highly mineralized gold-rich line of quartz. It was deposited into the bedrock of Ballarat some 430 million years ago, give or take, during one of the numerous subduction events that occurred here. The part of the reef that was discovered is here and multiple companies worked it. But by far, the most renowned company was the Temperance Mine, which was the standout quartz mine in the area northeast of Ballarat, known as Narina today, or Little Bendigo in its heyday. The mine produced 1,530 kilograms of gold out of a total of 3,511 kilograms for the whole of that field, meaning they produced almost half of all the gold that came out of Little Bendigo slash Narina. But the richest mine that worked this reef was the Band of Hope, situated just a little north of Temperance, with them yielding an incredible two ounces of gold per tonne of crushed quartz, which is insanely rich. Temperance have a street named after them just a stone throws away from where this major mine once operated, and the shaft they used still exists to this day. This shaft was visibly open only a year or so ago, but blackberry vines have grown over it. Even with that, you wouldn't want to hop into this hole for reasons I'm about to mention. For well over 20 years, this company worked this reef down to the deepest depth out of any mine in Ballarat, with them approaching 1,000 feet in depth, or almost 305 meters, and the gold was damn good. But this story is less about the company and more about the mystery regarding why this reef suddenly disappeared from this point onwards. In the book, The Astonishing History of Ballarat, Volume 3, the following line appears. The Temperance Reef was worked from about 1853 to 1893, when it was found that its continuity going south was broken by a cross course, beyond which, I believe, it was never traced. This cross course is what I will address in this video, but as you will see, multiple attempts were made to locate it. The first company that tried and failed was the Express Quartz Co, located here. The owner of this mine got into a conflict with the boys from Temperance, and was tarred and feathered in one instance after being beat up when attempting to literally encroach on their claim in the most disrespectful and forceful manner imaginable. He kinda deserved it. Eventually, the Express Quartz Company began operations, but soon failed and the claim and the mine was bought up by the Temperance Company to be reborn as the South Temperance Mine, after which the trail goes cold after 1875. It too had failed in locating the southern section of the Temperance Reef. Other attempts were made by these men to locate it, with two other shafts being sunk to the southwest of the South Temperance Mine, and they were also called South Temperance Mine, but again, nothing came of it. The last mine that attempted to intercept it was the Russell Square Co 
which worked ground post 1880s that was associated with the famous Eureka Deep Lead, roughly 30 years after it was discovered. Their intention was to reach this deep lead and two suspected tributaries, to get any of the alluvial gold that earlier miners missed. And along with this, they sought to find the missing Temperance Reef, and were expected to as well, with many people confident that this was exactly where it ran, and that the company would find it any day now. Well, they didn't, and you're going to find out why in a moment. This bit of knowledge that I'm going to share with you is a game changer, especially if you're a prospector or miner. But if you're like me, and you just love geology and the ability to interpret the land as much as I do, then this information is also essential to do that with any level of accuracy in Victoria. So whilst this concept is being applied to a very deep mine in this video, it's also applicable to shallow ground, and the implications of it are truly far-reaching. This information, when appropriately applied, opens up a whole new world of prospectivity in this amazing state. The only thing that's stopping me from proving my hypothesis is the ability to legally sink a shaft to the required depth. Believe me, if I could do what the old fellas did and head to the store, buy some dynamite, peg out a claim and begin blasting, I'd be doing that right now to prove it. But the value in this isn't so much in the reef, at least it isn't for me. It's more in what the implications are regarding how it broke off from the main line, and how it got moved away from it. This information will probably interest the Ballarat Gold Mine, so if you guys decide to get a claim, just remember who gave you the info, and at least give me an infinite amount of free tours down there so I can nerd out on the geology. That's all I ask in return. Anyway, this explanation and the ultimate realisation that it provided to me regarding the location of the reef originally began with me attempting to decipher a weird geological oddity at Black Hill. Black Hill was a massive open cut gold mine. Low yielding, but odd in that because it was so extensively worked, it was mapped to perfection. But in the mapping, instead of seeing the typical east to west facing faults, which are to be expected in Victoria, as this entire state was more or less formed from subduction events that dipped underneath the west from the east, thrusting it up in the process. And yesterday's video touched on that, and it's definitely worth watching this video first, so that you can understand what I'm about to say in more detail. Basically, it appears to me that a Horst and Graben event altered this land in recent geological time. When the shafts were sunk to locate the missing Temperance Reef, this valuable bit of information was never taken into consideration. And as a result, the miners never sunk to the appropriate depth when they made their shafts. They sunk it to around the 60 to 90 meter mark. Not realizing that this part of the earth, known as a Graben, had sunk in recent geological history, whilst the area where they found the original reef was on top of a horst, an area of elevated land that had become uplifted. So whilst these sections of the reef were once joined, they had now broken apart, and the southern section of it became depressed along with the land, because it lost its buddy to the north, and there was no geological psychiatrist available back then. I mean, because the land it was located on sunk an additional god knows how many meters, and there's a chance it sheared off a little to the east or west. One thing to take into account is the rule of erosion that applies to uplifted sections of land. The higher it goes, the more pronounced erosion is, and the byproduct of this erosion was deposited on the depressed section of land, and eventually it was further buried by recent volcanic eruptions. But it's not only the fact that this southern section of the reef might be, at a guess, 200 meters deep, it's also the fact that erosion was more pronounced on the Horst section, meaning the Temperance Reef that was found and worked was sitting on a section of land that had eroded to a much more pronounced extent than the depressed block, so it's not even clear if this reef was outcropping when this land began to shift. The Express Quartz Co. stopped their sinking at a depth of 76 meters. They'd given up by this point. But really, they needed to sink an additional 100 meters, maybe a bit more, assuming they were sinking on the right location to begin with. And the fellas from the Temperance Mine made this same mistake in their other two shafts. They just didn't sink deep enough. So because of this, the implications are widespread, and they go far beyond just this point. Western Victoria is filled with numerous Horston Grabens. Many rivers were dried up by these events, and many others were sunk deep into the earth. The shallowest parts of the deep leads are located here, and the deepest in the Grabens. So right now, in present day, I'd be willing to bet an arm and a leg that the southern section of the Temperance Reef is deep underneath Ballarat East. 
And if you listen carefully, you can hear it mocking us for our futile attempts to locate it. Maybe one day we'll sink a shaft deep enough to reach it, and we can pay it back for its deception by blasting the hell out of it with explosives and crushing it into mere dust so that we can extract the value that lies therein. Or maybe it'll be spared the same grisly fate that the northern section of it experienced, beginning over 160 years ago. Thanks for watching.